We're going to start with a fuel tank and eliminating these restrictions. I do not recommend you do this to a truck that you don't personally drive and take care of yourself. If this is a fleet, please don't do these modifications. If, you are, uh, if it's your own personal vehicle and you have direct control of the fuel that you put in the vehicle and that you can keep a close eye on it. Because we're eliminating some of the, the filters and safeguards in the system, it requires you to change your fuel filter more often. We don't want any dirt or crud to get into the injection system. Starting with the rear of the truck, we have to make sure that the fuel is being delivered correctly out of the tank. This requires an inspection of the interior of the tank to make sure that there's no buildup of junk down there that clogs on this screen. Uh, on the earlier models, this is what your sending unit will look like. It's a very simple sending unit, just a straight tube. But you've got to make sure that this area isn't clogged. On your later model ones, uh, uh, sending, on the later model sending units, you're going to find that there's a, a, an extra set of filters in here that, that ride up inside, inside here. Now I choose to eliminate those. Lots of times they will have some crud on them. It's very important that nothing is clogged in the back. American fuel is extremely dirty. There's lots of paraffin, there's lots of crud in it, uh, and as a result you will get some buildup here. This is the very first place to start. Anything up line from this area, if it does not have uh, adequate flow back in this area, then everything up in the front of the motor won't make any difference. It's important that we have good flow at this spot. And I recommend dropping the fuel tank about every 100,000 miles in these trucks and going through and checking all this stuff to make absolutely sure that there's no stuff down in there. And as you look down in here, you can see that there's a buildup of crud down here in the bottom of the tank. Every time you run the engine, the crud that's sitting right there on the bottom of the tank is going to lodge itself on this screen. And as a result, it's going to restrict the flow. Now, in the later model ones, when we eliminate these two filters here inside the unit, then that will help increase flow. Again, if you're not getting the flow from the tank, anything we do to the front and on the motor uh, is a waste of time. Now, the fuel flows from the tank up the side of the rail if you have a late model uh, truck, your fuel pump will be right here on the frame rail. Early model trucks have the fuel pump in the reservoir of the, uh, of the engine. And it comes up the frame rail, and it comes through these two fuel lines, right, right down here you can see the fuel lines, and it goes up and into the fuel filter reservoir. Our next bottleneck is in the fuel filter reservoir. This is your fuel filter reservoir located on the top of your engine. And as we remove the fuel filter, you see that down in here, there's a couple restrictions. There's a couple restrictions inside this unit. Your incoming fuel comes in through this port, and your outgoing fuel goes out this port. And this is your fuel pressure regulator on a 99 up power stroke. One of the restrictions that I like to eliminate is located right inside of here. If you see, this, this has a spring inside of it, and what this is designed to do is that when you install the filter, it pushes this down so that you can't run the engine without a filter. Okay, well, anybody who would want to do that would be an idiot anyway. Since we're not idiots and we're not going to run our truck without a filter in it, we can go ahead and eliminate this bottleneck. Now, this particular piece here that this, this right here is your fuel heater and it's a very important part of the the running of the vehicle in the winter time so we remove these two uh, number 20 Torx uh, screws and we pull the whole system out be careful when you take this plug off inside here because it is sort of delicate inside the tube here is a plunger with a spring and this spring is located at the bottom and as you screw down the fuel filter it depresses it depresses this so the fuel is allowed to enter. What we do is we just eliminate the whole damn thing. Just take it completely out of there. And uh, you know it's not, and you see how much restriction there is there. The fuel can't flow through that as fast with it in there as without it. Because the fuel comes in, again the fuel comes in here, it's pressurized here. This is actually pressurized. And then it climbs up through the filter and then goes down through this area and then is distributed out to the, uh, the individual cylinder heads here. So now that we've eliminated that, we can go ahead and reinstall the heater 
and the tube. One of the things that has to be said is a lot of people like to clean their uh, their parts with brake cleaner and I have nothing against it. In fact I use the stuff every day to clean these areas. Uh, but you gotta understand that the rubber seals like the one on this tube or the one in your fuel tank uh, they are adversely affected by the uh, by the uh, the brake cleaner and it will cause it to to swell up and then they're worthless so if you're going to clean with a brake cleaner be very sensitive to the, the seals themselves and make sure that you completely remove them and put them in a different spot before you uh, you start cleaning because these these seals will will fail now once we have it back once we have it all back in there we want to go ahead and take a pair of needle nose pliers and put on the heater, re, re, reinstall the heater plug there. One other area that we can concern ourselves with and there is an aftermarket, there's a lot of aftermarket stuff for this is the actual regulator. This is your fuel pressure regulator located on the top of your fuel filter reservoir. It will be coming out the driver's side if you're looking straight down from the top. Now when we take this apart and remove it you will find, now this is late model, this is what you will find on any truck past about 19, mid-year 98, 99 uh, on up to 2003. This is the type of fuel pressure regulator you will encounter. As we take this apart, and this, is, this regulates all the fuel pressure for the system. And it has a spring inside there. There's a couple different aftermarket manufacturers that offer stiffer springs for this. It's a good idea. You will increase your fuel pressure substantially. Very simple design. This is your return line. Attaches here, goes back. Again, you have a rubber seal. It's okay to clean it. Just remove your seal before you put the, put the stuff to it. And it's a very simple spring and plunger. If you take this spring and you replace it with a stiffer spring, it's a fairly lightweight spring. You're probably going to encounter about 45 to 50 psi of, uh, of fuel pressure. If you can increase that to 70 by putting a stiffer spring in there, it's a good idea to do this. By increasing the fuel pressure, you know, through replacing the spring, you're going to put added strain on the seals. And you have to make sure that all the seals.